I've had this idea for a while now, and it's only now I was able to make it happen. So please enjoy my build of the Lunchbox Arcade. Also, this video is sponsored by PCBWay, but more on that later. So first things first, like with all my builds, I come up with a sketch and all the stuff that is required. For this, I obviously need a tin lunchbox, the joysticks and buttons, a Raspberry Pi, a speaker, a power switch and charging port, and an LCD screen of some sort. I've left a list of all the parts I used in the description below. As I said, I had this idea for years now, but there is a YouTuber that has something similar, if not more professional looking than mine. The main part of this build and to make it all work actually stems from the joystick. It's a detachable joystick which has a lever to clip the joystick on and off. After I have all the parts, I want to actually test whether it all works. So here I am just piecing all the parts together without any case. The LCD screen is really nice and has a handy board to control the screen settings. Add in the audio board which attaches onto the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header is extremely easy to use and assemble. Once everything's plugged in, I do a quick test to make sure that the screen, speaker and controls are working. Now onto the battery and power switch to power everything on. This is the power switch. I bought this one as it would be easy to attach onto the launch box. Also, make sure you seal off any exposed connections with some shrink wrap tubing. For the power board, I had these Adafruit power boost boards in my electronics pile, so I just went ahead and used that. The wiring is pretty simple, and I've left a wiring diagram in the description below. And here's a quick test of it powering on with the switch. Onto the arcade joystick and buttons. I traced out a rough template and drew out where I want the buttons to go. Transitioning the designs to pieces of card really helped me know how much room I have in the lunchbox. Okay, so this is actually my first time 3D modeling, so please be kind in the comments. I used FreeCAD as it was, well, free to use, and it was surprisingly easy to get going. I'm definitely no expert by any means, but I think it turned out all right in the end. Using my 3D splicing tool for my 3D printer, I had to split all the parts in two, as my printer will not print this large. Filing the edges a little so the edges can adhere and bond to the pieces better and ensuring that I have a flat surface on both sides. And a quick check to make sure that the button is able to fit in the centre. I'm using some epoxy resin to bond the pieces together and masking tape to hold it all together whilst it's curing. Once dried, I realised I made the measurements a millimetre too small for the buttons to go in, which meant I had to drill a small amount from each hole to fit everything in. Drilling the holes from the lunchbox was a little nerve wracking as I did not have a spare lunchbox. I did actually make a hole a little too big, but it wasn't the end of the world and it came out okay. Just be patient and make sure you're using a metal filer to get a snug fit. And as you can see here, I did have to use hot glue so the parts wouldn't move. It's definitely not a clean finish, but it would be covered up so no one would see it anyway. 
I bought these rubber stick on feet to give it a bit of space between the switches and the bottom of the lunchbox so it doesn't actually switch the switches. The next part is a rough assembly. Just make sure all the inner parts go in fine and I have enough space to fit and close the lid. There was one thing I missed out on the top cover and that's a small cutout for the screen's ribbon cable to go through. A quick file will suffice. Once done, a quick primer and now to remove all the parts and transfer them over to the 3D printed part. Once all that is done, I zip tie the cables so there are some neatness. And now everything can be connected to the arcade controller board. The speaker goes on next and held in with four screws. And lastly the controller board for the LCD screen which is held in with two screws. And the top half of the arcade is done. And there are four screws holding the whole piece down. And a quick test to ensure that it all still works fine. Now onto the screen's case. Stupidly, once I printed it and glued it together, this case does not close as the print is too big. I used a pencil to trace the length I need to trim and printed it once again. To stick the screen in place, I printed a thin brace and stuck it all down using some strong 3M tape. And this time, it was able to close just fine. Looking online, I did find a different joystick which was a screw fit joystick and not using a latch system. It also came with this plastic piece in the box. This was perfect as I can glue a bolt at the end and attach it to the lunchbox. As I said, the main thing for this lunchbox arcade to work is having a detachable joystick. And having a joystick situated somewhere on the lunchbox meant you can carry the lunchbox arcade wherever you want. Now for the hinge. I did make a few designs, but I came up with this in the end. Using the solder iron and Kapton tape, push each rod through and melt it until it's sealed onto each leg and hinge. Sorry for the rough description, I have no technical name for each piece. One of the issues I found after assembling it, the plastic pieces would catch onto any protruding plastic. Just file that down enough that it's able to move freely. Now it's to assemble the final piece, and in my opinion, the trickiest part. As you would need to align the pieces so that the whole thing can close, by the same time not be in the way when you're gaming. And there you have it, the Lunchbox Arcade. Well this project was so fun, I made a second one, so stay tuned. And now segueing over to my sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is, as you've guessed, is a company that will prototype your PCB designs as well as 3D printing and CNC. To get started for 3D printing, all you need to do is click on the Get Started button and upload your STL files. You will have the options to pick different materials such as resin, nylon, PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, PC, ASA, PEEK, aluminium, stainless steel, titanium or tall steel. Once done, you can see the quoted price. Click on the submit request button and here it will be under the review for a member of the PCB Way team to review your 3D models. Once done and verified, click on the part you want to print and then you can proceed to check out. And after a week it arrived and I can tell you I am absolutely pleased with how these came out. I chose a green PLA like the material for the Star Wars build and the quality is absolutely great and definitely feels a lot sturdier than my prints. Obviously one of the best things is not having two parts that you have to glue together. It's just one piece and leaves no mess. If I compare the quality with my prints, the layers are a lot finer compared to mine and there are absolutely no issues I found at all. I really recommend PCB Way to anyone who has a project and needs a 3D print as the quality is that good. So using my initial joystick, I actually got my brother to design the latch as I didn't really know how to achieve it in FreeCAD. But essentially it mimics the latch on the joystick and clips in with a little to no movement. 
I take the whole piece and attach it to the front of the bottom case. This again is held down with some epoxy resin. But the fit is pretty tight, but just to be on the safe side, a little glue wouldn't harm. Onto the power booster. The Adafruit power booster was actually sold out when I needed it, but I did find an alternative, which is actually cheaper and actually has a few more functionality than the Adafruit one. Wiring is pretty much the same. Annoyingly, the text for each part is on the bottom, so do make sure you wire the correct one. Once done, wire all the parts together, including the battery. And as I turn it on, you can actually see a battery status indicator light, which is absolutely great. And assembly is pretty much the same as the Star Wars build, but a big disclaimer here. And it's my fault for not checking. Apparently all tin lunchboxes are not made the same way. A TMNT lunchbox is actually smaller than the Star Wars one, so I did have to remodel everything again. For the speaker, unfortunately they sold out of the one I used for the Star Wars one. Instead I print out a bracket which I stock onto the speaker and it has four holes to attach the whole thing together. The screen case was also similar and had to reduce the size a bit more, but assembly is just the same. Glue the bracket in and use 3M tape to hold it to the lunchbox. A few more wiring and soldering and we should be good to close everything up. Again, the hinge is exactly the same. Using a solder iron and capped on tape, just be sure it's not rubbing against any plastic pieces when closing. And obviously the trickiest bit is sticking it on and making sure that the whole case closes without any issues. And to that, we're also complete with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Lunchbox Arcade. But something does not look right. That's better. So there are differences between these two builds and I feel once I knew what I learned from the Star Wars build I tried to improve it on the TMNT one. For example the charging port instead of using the peel shaped port I opted for the round one as it made drilling a lot easier. The joysticks were obviously different and required a model of the joystick latch. The hinges are the same and pretty much pleased how it turned out. The button placements are the same just minor adjustments to the overall size of the top case. Onto the improvements. 
I think having two charging ports is a big issue, as it means I have to remember to charge two batteries before I can play, and obviously two power buttons to turn the screen and Raspberry Pi on. The size of the lunchbox was a little difficult to contend with, as I had to make sure I can fit the bottom and top piece and not having to destroy the lunchbox in any way, but it does mean I have gaps around the edges. The inside is an absolute jungle of wires, and parts not fitting in nice spots. But it's all hidden, so I guess I don't need to worry about that too much. I found the hinge a problem as the 3M tape was not strong enough to hold the screen upright. I resolved this by using epoxy resin, but it's not exactly the clean look. And the amount of revisions I had to do, model, print, get it wrong, then model and print again, was a little frustrating. As I said, I bought these parts a while ago, back in 2021 to be precise, and obviously ran out of warranty. I did find some issues with the screen, but the guys at Pimeroni was extremely helpful in replacing the screen and board, so just a quick shout out to them, thanks a lot guys. And lastly the sound. I think it would have been better to have some sort of volume control to manage the volume, as it's pretty loud. Overall, I'm really happy with what I've made. So if anyone's out there that can make this better, please do. It's really fun, especially if you have a lunchbox design that is dear to you. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.